Welcome to Declassifying the Paranormal. Here we reveal the secrets that sinister organizations attempt to conceal from the world, objects and entities that could shake the very foundations of what we think is, and is not, possible. Today we have secured documents belonging to the SCP Foundation, and will reveal to you the nature of SCP-6029. Item Number SCP-6029 Object Class Chatter Special Containment Procedures SCP-6029 is to be kept in a containment chamber at Site-43, on a steel block measuring 50 cm by 50 cm by 50 cm. The block is suspended from the ground through the use of powerful electromagnets built into the floor and ceiling. The chamber is vacuum sealed, no air is to be allowed in the chamber under any circumstances. To ensure the docility of SCP-6029, three times a day, personnel in hazmat suits must enter the chamber for feeding purposes. These personnel are to press cracked wooden boards against the block, wait for SCP-6029 to inhabit each board, then return it to the block. Personnel are strictly forbidden to make physical contact with SCP-6029. Any changes in SCP-6029's behavior are to be immediately reported to the project head. Note, SCP-6029 is scheduled for transfer to Area 07 on the 30th of November 2021. Archive Containment Procedures SCP-6029 is to kept in a containment chamber at Site-43, on a steel block measuring 30 cm by 30 cm by 30 cm. The floor of the chamber is to be covered in sand with the entire layer measuring 30 cm in height. Physical contact with the cube is to be performed through the use of a mechanical arm. All tests involving SCP-6029 must be screened by Dr. Dusen, specialist in thaumaturgy and handling of sentient anomalies, before approval. Description SCP-6029 is an entity resembling a fissure capable of traversing any form of solid matter, which it accomplishes by locomoting in a manner similar to a snake. SCP-6029's presence inherently damages the material it is inhabiting creating additional fissures stemming directly from its main body. All damage will be reversed when SCP-6029 transfers to a new object. Transference requires two or more objects making physical contact with each other. Separation of affected objects proves impossible during this process. Separation is only possible when SCP-6029 fully inhabits a single object. SCP-6029's existence is not limited to exterior surfaces, as it is fully capable of penetrating deep into an object's interior. SCP-6029 displays signs of sentience. Its passive state consists of acquiring additional fissures from other materials. When a fissure is in close proximity to SCP-6029 it will take the most direct route to the target. When inhabiting an object it will make contact with the fissure, and absorb it into its main body before becoming docile. It is believed that this behavior previously functioned as a survival mechanism to maintain its form, but due to the events of Addendum 03, it can now sustain itself indefinitely. SCP-6029 will enter an aggressive state when a sentient being intentionally strikes against the entity or destroys the object it is currently inhabiting. SCP-6029 will first absorb any fissures created by the assault, then make a path directly to the offending subject and attempt to attach itself to them. If successful, SCP-6029 will expand and envelop their body, remaining until expiration. SCP-6029 will then detach from the subject, and resume its passive state. History SCP-6029 became known to the Foundation on 8 April 2020 when videos and internet posts began circulating online, showing it absorbing a multitude of fishes on a sidewalk in San Juan Capistrano, California. MTF Epsilon-6 Village Idiots, was deployed to the area but faced difficulty in capturing SCP-6029 due to the nature of the anomaly. 
NTF Epsilon-6 eventually subdued SCP-6029 by placing a fractured brick in its path, allowing it to inhabit the object and quickly inserting it into a bucket filled with sand from a nearby playground. At the time, SCP-6029 was incapable of traversing loose granular substances. It has since gained this ability. All references regarding SCP-6029 were removed from the Internet and all witnesses were administered Class A amnestics. SCP-6029 was delivered to Site-77 after being granted SCP object status and the method MTF Epsilon-6 used on the entity was incorporated into its containment. See Archived Containment Procedures. Upon becoming head researcher, Dr. Chet Dusen commenced a series of tests to determine the extent of SCP-6029's anomalous properties. Access SCP-6029 Partial Test Log Materials required, 1 cube of putty, 1 cube of glass, 1 cube of ice, 1 cube of wood, 1 cube of stone, 1 cube of steel, 1 cube of concrete. Parameters, all cubes were placed on the sand of the testing containment chamber, and arranged in a single horizontal column. The concrete cube was intentionally damaged to create multiple fissures and placed on one end of the column while the cube inhabited by SCP-6029 was placed on the opposite end. Result SCP-6029 left the cube it inhabited. It traversed the entire column and reached the other cube, inhabiting it and absorbing the fissures as expected. SCP-6029 was able to move across the cubes composed of putty glass, ice, and wood flawlessly. SCP-6029's rate of speed was significantly decreased while making contact with the cubes composed of stone and steel. A robotic arm quickly grasped the cube SCP-6029 inhabited and placed back into its bucket. Notes It appears SCP-6029 has a harder time moving across materials that are more compact and denser. Multiple variations of this test reveal that SCP-6029 is very fond of mineral-based substances, especially metal. I believe that we can further entice SCP-6029 into submission with this in mind. Dr. Dusen. Materials, one rectangular wall mirror. Parameters, the mirror was intentionally damaged by blunt force. The glass shards were arranged in the shape of the original mirror, and laid on the sand of the testing chamber. A robotic arm quickly grasped the cube, and placed it on the glass. Result, SCP-6029 transferred to the glass two seconds after making contact. While inhabiting the mirror it absorbed all cracks in the glass, effectively making the mirror whole again. SCP-6029 was enticed back into its cube and placed back into the bucket. Notes SCP-6029 can potentially repair objects given if the pieces are arranged so the edges will appear as cracks or fissures. Perhaps we can possibly use SCP-6029 as a means to recycle materials slash structures broken during containment breaches? It's certainly an avenue we can explore. The resources we can save with that method alone will do wonders. Dr. Dusen. Materials, multiple fragments of glass, pottery, metal, cloth, wood, and stone, one mat. Parameters, the mat was placed on the sand of the containment chamber. The fragments were arranged closely together, so they would be positioned into the rough shape of a circle. A robotic arm quickly grasped the cube, and placed it on top of the circle. Result, SCP-6029 transferred to the fragments at moment of contact. It absorbed all the tight spaces between the fragments, fusing them into a single object. It was enticed back into the cube, and placed back into its bucket. Notes It appears that SCP-6029 can affect chemical bonds in a similar effect to SCP-170, with the only difference being that SCP-170 only affects the molecular level while SCP-6029 affects the atomic level. I'll request an investigation into the matter, but I doubt much will come of it. What was interesting is that I caught it making shapes and moving around the block faster than normal after the experiment. We quickly ruled out communication as it has the mindset of a canine. Perhaps this is its way of entertaining itself? 
Some in my team are weary about it but I surely don't mind it. It's kind of amusing actually. Dr. Dusen. Materials, D41289. Parameters, D41289 was instructed to make contact with the cube, and hold onto it until being ordered to place it back into the bucket. Result, D41289 was hesitant, but obeyed orders and grasped the cube with both hands. SCP-6029 remained motionless for three seconds before traversing D-41289's right arm. D-41289 vocalized heightened sounds of anguish as he began to bleed profusely. D-41289 frantically attempted to remove the cube from his right hand but was incapable of doing so until SCP-6029 fully inhabited his body and disappeared underneath his sleeve. D-41289 tore off his shirt when he witnessed pools of blood starting to soak the material. SCP-6029 was moving sporadically within the confines of the epidermis and muscles of the torso causing immense pain as he continued to bleed. A medical response team on standby rushed into the chamber carrying a replacement cube. The team ordered D41289 to make physical contact with the cube, he complied. SCP-6029 transferred to the replacement cube, absorbing the fissures already on it. D41289 lost consciousness and was taken to the medical bay. Test prematurely cancelled. Notes Too messy for my tastes, but luckily the D-Class survived. It was revealed that D41289 had a kidney transplant prior to acquisition but the nurses confirmed that the surgical scars were nowhere to be found. What matters is that flesh can host SCP-6029. From this point forward any future physical contact with SCP-6029 is strictly forbidden. Shame. I was hoping SCP-6029 could be used as healing remedy. Dr. Dusen. Materials required, D-90939, one mallet and one chisel. Parameters, the cube was removed from the bucket and placed on the sand of the containment chamber. D-90939 was ordered to use the mallet and chisel he was provided to extract samples from the cube. Result, D-90939 obeyed instructions and began the extraction. D-90939 hammered the chisel directly on SCP-6029. SCP-6029 immediately entered an aggressive state and traversed to D-90939 using the chisel as a conduit. D-90939 panicked as SCP-6029 enveloped his entire body causing immense pain and major blood loss before collapsing. The medical team arrived, but was greeted with D-90939's body violently separating, coating them and the containment chamber in an abundant amount of blood. Several members of the team suffered injuries and required medical attention. SCP-6029 was later found inhabiting D-90939's left foot and was placed back into containment. Notes It took the janitors weeks to clean all the gunk from the chamber. We need to be careful in our approach to the handling of SCP-6029. I cannot stress that enough, that poor kid exploded over the walls like a grenade. Although tragic, this test does reveal another factor we haven't considered yet. I know that we don't exactly allow anomalies into the field anymore but SCP-6029's unique method of attack could prove useful against anomalies that are highly durable, and it doesn't seem like it can be killed in the traditional sense either. With more experimentation I could shape SCP-6029 into a great asset under those circumstances. Good thing we got to it first, I would hate to see what our enemies would do to it given the chance. Dr. Dusen. After seven months of successful containment of SCP-6029, Site-77 experienced a major earthquake. Though no personnel were lost, SCP-6029 was freed from its containment chamber, escaped Site-77 and disappeared into a nearby forest. It was designated a moderate-level search priority after lockdown was lifted. Addendum 01 
Diplomatic Issues SCP-6029 resurfaced two months later within Rome, Italy after reports emerged of it absorbing various fissures within the Colosseum. SCP-6029 was contained and transferred to Site-43 due to it possessing advanced earthquake-resistant architecture. Dr. Dusan also transferred to Site-43 to resume his research on the entity. Several days later, a representative of the Council of 108 from the Global Occult Coalition contacted the Foundation regarding concerns they wished to discuss in private. A meeting was scheduled with both parties in hopes that an agreement could be reached on the issue at hand. Access SCP colon slash 6029 slash meeting slash gawk. Date, the 5th of March 2021. Present, Chet Dusan, SCP-6029 Research Head, Alan J. McKinnis, Site 43 Director, 05-8, via video call. Daniel Burchard, 108 Council Member, Cameron DeLong, Burchard's Personal Bodyguard. Begin log. All right, looks like we're all here. Nice to make your acquaintance, Mr. Burchard. I hope the flight here wasn't too bad. Wipe off the smile. We're not in the mood. Dr. Deuce and I twitches for a moment before returning to normal. We have a meeting with the other 108 later today. It'll be best if we speed this along. I understand, council member, although I am perplexed. The 108 doesn't like requesting meetings with us in person, much less on short notice. What's the occasion? Oh, nothing much. We just need you to hand over the crack. Excuse me? Don't you play dumb. That crack that can move by itself? We know you contained it. We were trying to corner it in Italy but we found out later you beat us to the punch. Trust me, it'll be better for everyone involved if you'll allow us to take it off your hands. But, the Meridio's policy. A policy that was established between the Foundation and Gorp, which rules that any anomaly captured by either organization will belong to their jurisdiction. Exactly. We're only here to collect what's owed. Holy in our custody, not the hybrid sites. A site where the Foundation shares co-ownership with the Gork or pro-Foundation organizations. Hold on. I believe your organization had prior contact with the anomaly, but I feel there is more to this than you're letting on. Like 05-8 said, the 108 don't attend this sort of meeting. Virgid frowns and gestures to DeLong. DeLong sets a briefcase on the table, opens it and pushes several documents towards Dr. Dusan and Director McInnes. We first established contact with KTE-6220-Quake, the crack, around mid-January. We had trouble engaging it on the spot so we decided to capture it and send it over to one of our facilities in Europe. We hypothesized if we had it fully infect a piece of flammable material and incinerated it, it would be liquidated. But of course that would have been too easy. McInnes picks up a document and quickly scans through its contents. There were casualties? Nineteen to be exact, with five of them being higher-ranking generals who were at the wrong place at the wrong time. That would be tragic enough without counting the handful of injured soldiers and damage costs. I'll simplify things, since you're having trouble grasping. The council is pissed, and so am I this anomaly is more trouble than it's worth alive, even by your standards. I don't know why this needs to be discussed further. You agreed to the policy, you don't own it. Actually, council member. As a matter of fact, we do. We contained SCP-6029 late last year. Oh. Is that so? I can prove it. Just wait right here. Dr. Dusan excuses himself and exits the conference room. He returns with the documentation for SCP-6029 and hands it to Burchard and along. Burchard shows signs of amusement as he continues to read the documents. So I was wrong after all, how rare. Wow. 
I can tell you put in a lot research and dedication to this. It's very descriptive. Well, we do hire the best of the best. Um hum. It says here that you had to transfer the anomaly to a different site. Um. Yes, the original site was not adequate to store SCP-6029. It was somewhat old, you see. I see. So what you're telling me is that due to your oversight you allowed KTE-6220-Quake to escape, potentially causing untold amounts of death and destruction. Actually, it kind of already did, didn't it? What? I, no, it happened outside of our control. The earthquake. Are you telling me that the best of the best that the Foundation has to offer got outdone by a mere earthquake? That's interesting. I find that very interesting, and I'm willing to bet that the 108 would feel the same way as well. DeLong reads the documents and sets them down in disbelief. I don't know sir, this is more complicated than we thought. Maybe we should do a joint custody instead? I don't think. Cameron Richard glares at DeLong, then looks to his wristwatch and sighs. DeLong takes a glance at the watch, then turns to Director McInnes. Look, I'm sure none of us want to rock the boat. We can easily solve this with a couple of signatures and it'll be a done deal. And what would happen if, for whatever reason, this deal falls through? On your part? In that case I believe it would be best for the Coalition to seriously reconsider any further cooperation with the Foundation from now on. I know certainly the U.S. government would welcome us with open arms after that little incident in Cuba, but I digress. I would love to stay and chat, really I would, but we got a plane to catch. I expect you'll be ready to contact us when you've made the right choice. Bye. DeLong packs up the suitcase and both he and Burchard exit the conference room. Dr. Dusan leans in his chair and scoffs. I can't believe the nerve of that scumbag. Are we really going to let that slide? He was practically threatening us. I'd love to cooperatively shove my foot up his ass. Too dangerous for our standards? He can go. Let it go, Dusan. It's not worth getting upset over. So... What do you think? As much as I hate it, as it stands now I believe transferring ownership is the lesser of two evils. But sir, my team and I have made extraordinary progress on SCP-6029. You saw my findings, think of the applications. Repairing broken materials, using it as a process for decommissioning of extremely dangerous anomalies, I was going to see how it was going to react to thaumaturgy. Are we just going to cave to them without even putting up a fight? This is not a fight that would end well for us. We haven't been doing so well in recent years, in terms of global influence. The last thing we need is to drive more of our friends away. Exactly. This is a matter of stability. I know Bertrand personally, he has immense influence in the 108. I imagine it wouldn't be that hard to twist the narrative against us, especially when it concerns one of their own. We will send you the results of the vote soon. Keep up the good work. 05-8 signs off, Dr. Dusan presses his face into his hands. I cannot believe this. All that research gone up in smoke because of a damn earthquake. If only we had sent it here in the first place. Goddamn God. Nothing we can do about it, Dr. Dusan. Now, I hear they've finally brought SCP-458 to the cafeteria. Best we go there before they ship it out again. Staff can take as many slices as they want. Size, well at least one thing today is going right. End log. Following the conclusion of the meeting, 05-8 brought the SCP-6029 issue concerning to the rest of the 05 Council. After much deliberation, it was decided by a vote of 7-4 on the 27th of May 2021 that the transference of SCP-6029 from the Foundation to Gork custody be approved. Dr. Dusan expressed extreme dismay over this decision, citing the potential research opportunities, but ultimately allowed custody to be revoked after carrying out the final preparations for transfer.
Daniel Burchard was pleased with the decision and reminded the Foundation that they were forbidden to interfere further with matters related to SCP-6029 under threat of severe penalties. Addendum 02 Escalation The GORG proceeded with destruction of SCP-6029 via dissolution in acid at an undisclosed facility. Before destruction could be carried out, SCP-6029 shattered the copper block it was inhabiting on its own initiative and the pieces made contact with the floor. SCP-6029 left the remnants of the block and receded into the lower levels of the facility, eventually escaping underground. Daniel Burchard was infuriated with the loss of SCP-6029 and severely disciplined all involved Gork personnel. SCP-6029 subsequently re-emerged in various European nations, attempting to acquire fishes, but was frequently interrupted by Gork forces attempting to capture and or terminate it. These termination methods often involved physically destroying the material SCP-6029 was inhabiting. Eventually SCP-6029 went into hiding and became inactive for a short period of time. On 8 February 2021, it preemptively attacked a group of Gork operatives, who were in the process of launching a raid against a Serpent's Hand hideout. Video footage and witness testimony suggested that SCP-6029 waited for the operatives to arrive, then ambushed them while distracted by the firefight, killing the majority before receding into the ground. Since this incident, SCP-6029 has demonstrated a new variant of its aggressive behavior. SCP-6029 has become highly active, producing a series of attacks on individuals and locations associated with the Gork at an increasing and alarming rate. SCP-6029's anomalous capabilities were also expanding incrementally during this period of time, with the primary changes being the entity's increase in size and the eventual independence from subsistence from absorbing other fishes. Below is a partial list of all known or suspected attacks by SCP-6029. Date Location Event The 8th of July 2021 Paris France several individuals were found dead within the top floor of the hotel. The injuries inflicted matched those caused by SCP-6029. It was later discovered that the victims were off-duty Gork agents, who had been renting the room until they were granted permission to leave the country. The witness who first came to the scene, a maid, claimed she entered their room upon hearing frantic screaming coming from inside. Before entering, the witness also claimed she saw the walls becoming cracked before repairing themselves. The maid was administered amnestics and all evidence was cleaned up by the Gork under the pretense of a police investigation. The 29th of August 2021 Berlin, Germany. A Gork military bunker became subject to attack during the night, when most of the operatives were asleep. SCP-6029 killed 32 operatives in total before the base's alarm was activated. Witnesses claimed SCP-6029 traveled up each of the bunk beds and onto the bodies of the sleeping operatives. Unlike most encounters, SCP-6029 killed them in a subtle manner, silently positioning itself across their necks, causing all blood vessels to be lacerated leading to death from exsanguination. SCP-6029 also disconnected the upper spinal column, resulting in its victims becoming immobilized during this process. Unable to escape through the main entrance due to SCP-6029 fusing the door to the wall, the operatives broke the windows and jumped down two stories above. SCP-6029 tried to follow the operatives but was forced to flee when additional Gork forces arrived. Subsequently, SCP-6029's threat level was increased by the Gork and they diverted significant resources towards its termination. The 18th of September 2021 Darwin, Australia A commercial truck owned by the Gork had its wheels spontaneously burst during travel on a toll tow before a section of the road broke off, causing the truck to fall from a large cliff. The sole function of the truck was to deliver needed supplies to a nearby facility. It was noted that SCP-6029 had a consistent preference for staying close to the ground since this date. 
the 10th of April 2021 Bargo, Myanmar a meeting between high-level government officials and Gork representatives was interrupted by the appearance of SCP-6029. SCP-6029 killed the representatives with minor injuries to the officials. This caused relations between the Myanmar government and the Gork to deteriorate and it was found that SCP-6029 size had grown exponentially as well. The Gork promptly designated SCP-6029 as a high-level threat and diverted abundant resources against the entity. The 15th of October 2021 Chunchu, South Korea after SCP-6029 was ranked top 10 of the Gork's priority list, Daniel Birch had presented a new proposal for its termination. This proposal detailed the use of an experimental task force consisting of proficient reality benders conditioned through the use of extensive amnestic treatment and reconditioning, and outfitted with miniature explosives sewn into their chest in case of rebellion. This task force was deployed upon receiving reports that SCP-6029 was in South Korea. The task force located SCP-6029 and attempted to terminate it using their reality-bending capabilities. The attack failed and SCP-6029 killed a significant portion of the task force before escaping. Since then, SCP-6029 became resistant to hume-altering effects. Furthermore, SCP-6029 was able to spread its mass through the air. Fortunately, it has not yet been seen to be able to cross fully into gaseous matter. The 17th of October 2021 New York City, United States see Addendum 03 for further details. Addendum 03, Cooperation, on the 17th of October 2021, the headquarters of the United Nations violently collapsed into a sinkhole without warning. Firefighters and construction crews were mobilized to rescue any survivors trapped in the rubble, but none were found to be alive. While the bodies in the initial rubble were easily identified, the ones in the lower levels were not, as they had been disfigured to the point where dental records were unviable for identification. The Global Occult Coalition used an extensive cover story of a terrorist attack to take account for the destruction of the building. Shortly after this incident, the Foundation received a message from a Gork representative requesting an emergency meeting with all previous liaisons present. This request was accepted, and the meeting was held at Site 43. Access SCP colon slash 6029 slash meeting 2 slash Gork. Date, the 18th of October 2021. Begin log. Director McInnes is observing reports on the table. Dr. Dusen is watching the television monitor, leaning forward in his chair. Construction crews are working tirelessly to rescue any survivors trapped inside. As of now, the current death toll has risen above 3,000. The United Nations has expressed extreme dismay over. Can you turn that off? It's not making my work any easier. Dr. Dusen's concentration is disrupted, and he switches off the monitor with a remote. Sorry. It's just. This is unbelievable. It must be. If you keep watching the same news cycle over and over again. No, I mean, am I the only one that isn't brushing this off? The Gawk. The one organization people keep going on about, how they're going to kick our teeth in one day, getting their own stomped in? It's like a car wreck that compels you to watch. It's incredible. It's honestly incredible. Sounds like you were hoping this would happen. What? No, I... I'm just them surprised, is all. I mean, sure I was peeved when they took my skip and research away. And yes, I was amused when the reports came of 6029 attacking them, but I just wanted to stay in the loop, you know. I mean, it only makes sense, right? I was the head researcher after all. Really? Look, the point is that we need to move forward. Speaking on the same matter, how is this going to affect things long term? With all this, uh, destruction going on, I would imagine it'll change a lot of things. I hope for our sake it's for the best. Since the power and influence of the Gok has diminished considerably, 
nations and organizations which had formerly supported them are now directing their attention towards us. Not to mention the fact that our budget has been increased. Really? I mean, that is something, I must say. It's one thing to lose big, but to have the dynamics of our relationship flip so dramatically. Very interesting, if I do say so myself. Do some. Speaking of relationships, where is the representative? Shouldn't they be here right now? I've been notified they've just arrived at the site. They'll be here momentarily. After a period of ten minutes, the door opens. Cameron DeLong enters the room. DeLong? In the flesh, DeLong sits at the table and rests his briefcase on the table. Sorry I was late. Things have been stressful back home if you can believe it. I can imagine so. Yeah, it's been very hard. A pleasure to meet once again, Mr. DeLong. May I ask where your employer is? I was expecting him to be here with you. You mean Burchard? Yeah, he's dead. What? He's dead? Daniel Burchard, council member of the 108th. Dead? How? You seen the news recently? Was he at the UN when it happened? DeLong nods. From what I understand, they were going to start an emergency meeting on the subject of the crack. They were basically trying to see what sticks, and what ideas to cross out. Burchard hadn't gotten much sleep, and asked me to get him a coffee and pastries because he hated the ones we served. I was driving back, I heard a crash and I saw dust over the horizon. Then I got the call. Suffice to say, I don't think you're going to be able to contact the 108. Ever again. The Council of 108 are dead. Are you certain of this? Since KT 6220-Quake became erratic, it's been mandatory for all council members and higher-ranking officials to wear sensors that record their vital signs at all times. The 108s went silent in less than five minutes, including under Secretary General Alfine. They believed the crack damaged much of the earth under the building slowly over time, and afterwards it most likely went through the ruble to find who was left. Dr. Dusen Mouse begins to twitch upwards. Director McInnes turns to look at Dr. Dusen, the latter affects a more neutral expression. Director McInnes clenches his pen firmly. To think I would have joined them if it weren't for the crappy food. Mr. DeLong, what is the purpose of your visit? I wanted to talk things out, see where the wind is blowing. I'm here in hopes I can. DeLong sighs, maybe get more information on the crack. Maybe see if we can reverse the agreement. I'm open to a lot of things at this point. Your superiors wish to reverse the agreement. More open to the idea nowadays. So, SCP-6029 will be transferred back to us and I'll have full research rights? I'm fully supportive of the idea, I feel confident it'll be secure in our hands again. No, no. They want to transfer it to a hybrid site. Joint ownership. But, the Gulf has already suffered major losses. Why spend more of it to watch? The Gork is not letting that thing out of its sight. After all the damage that has been done, the machines we could have used to further scientific progress and save lives, the lives it has taken. DeLong shudders, pressing his nails against the table, just to shrug it off and say whatever and go back to business as normal. If that's the general direction of where we're going, I'll be leaving immediately. I don't care if this thing ends up liquidated or contained forever. All we want is this thing to stop coming after us, and we want to make sure that we'll come to fruition. Front. Row. Seat. All we ask is, maybe, we can just let bygones be bygones and get back to what's important. Too much has gone wrong already. That can be arranged. What? I happen to be of the same mindset as well. Do the honors, Director McInnes. DeLong slides some documents to Director McInnes, who begins to sign them. Dr. Dusen expresses shock. All signed on our behalf. When can we expect a response? 
relatively soon. I'm sure it will be quick. When I get the green light, I'll send word back to you and we'll be able to discuss this further right here. The long points to a document. Director McInnes reads it. A hybrid site in Brazil. It's far enough from the US and that thing has never attacked a hybrid site before. It's also by the ocean so we can hop on a boat if worse comes to worse. My services are needed there, so I'll be gone after we're done here. Is there anything you want to add before we close this off? One more thing, actually. It says in your documents here that Director McInnes examines a single document closely, appearing highly confused. SCP-6029 has a thaumaturgic signature on it. Why is that? Your guess is good as mine. We certainly didn't put it there. We only noticed when it accidentally came into contact with one of our scanners. Your people didn't catch that the first time? It wasn't there the first time. Another mystery we don't have the time for. Wonderful. The long size. Anything else? No, we're satisfied. Then I'll be taking my leave. I hope to see you gentlemen soon. Goodbye. DeLong exits the conference room and O5-8 signs off. As Director McInnes organizes the documents, Dr. Dusen scowls. He turns to leave. You have a problem with joint containment. Pardon? When we agreed to do joint containment, you were shocked. Why? I figured. After all this time they'd want nothing more to do with that crack. It shocks me how persistent they can be sometimes but I'm not surprised. I kind of expected this actually. It's frustrating. Is that the only reason? I just think that. Maybe we should have defined the terms of this new contract a bit better. That's all. Is there a problem, Director? Right now. No. Well if that's all you need, I'll be heading back to the office. I have plenty of work that needs to be done. I'll see you later. All right. I'll see you soon. Dr. Dusen exits the conference room. Director McInnes begins to follow, stops and turns back to the desk. He looks to the hallway again before sitting down and pulling out a new document from a filing cabinet. He begins writing new orders. Real soon. End log. The next day, Area 07 established contact with SCP-6029. More than half of on-site personnel were killed in the ensuing attack by the entity, including Cameron DeLong. A review of security footage and witness testimony confirmed that SCP-6029 was avoiding causing harm, both directly and indirectly, to Foundation personnel. After receiving these news, Director McInnes ordered an investigation into all matters relating to SCP-6029. All research and documents were thoroughly examined and former personnel who had previously worked with SCP-6029 were monitored. The investigation was completed in less than a day. Access SCP colon slash 6029 slash MC Innis slash Dusen. Date the 20th of October 2021. Begin log. Director McInnes is working on the computer in his office until a knocking is heard on his door. He hastily finishes his message before turning the monitor away from the entrance. Come in. Dr. Dusen enters the office, visibly excited. Director McInnes gestures him to his seat. Dr. Dusen sits and places a paper bag on the desk. Good morning, Director. Thought I would surprise you with some pastries from the cafeteria. I would have gotten you some pizza but they already sent 458 out of the site. Quite a shame if I do say so myself. Yes, it's such a shame. Thanks for the gift. You know why I called you here, correct? Yes, sir. I saw the email. You're promoting me? Director McInnes nods with a smile. His right fist clenches slightly. That is correct, Dr. Dusen. We're satisfied with all your the hard work. What do you think? 
It's, it's an honor, director. I, I, God I don't know what to say. Dr. Dusen smiles. It's quite all right, Dr. Dusen. I understand. I know it's a big change but believe me, it's for the better. Now in terms of your promotion, do you prefer being D-class or worm food? A? Eh? Dr. Dusen's smile falters. D-class. Or worm food. We don't have all day, Dusen. You'll want to sit down for this. Okay, now let's just settle down. Dr. Dusen rises out of his seat. Director McInnes pulls out his service weapon from under the desk and points it at him. I said, sit down. Dusen, you can come in now. Multiple Foundation guards enter the office, all weapons trained on Dr. Dusen. Dr. Dusen sits back in the chair in disbelief. What the, what the fuck? This is McInnes. Why? You know why, Dusen. Don't make this harder than it has to be. Director. Please for God's sake. This is a mistake. I don't. Don't play dumb, Dusen. You know I hate that. Did you think we wouldn't find out? It really pains me to believe you think we're that naive after all this time. Director McInnes types on his keyboard before showing the monitor to Dr. Dusen. A camera view is displaying an overhead view of Dr. Dusen sitting in his office, patiently twiddling his fingers. SCP-6029 emerges from the floor, remaining still. Dr. Dusen turns and sees SCP-6029. He quickly moves away from his desk and locks the door. He then reaches into his desk and pulls out a pack of flash cards, and a plastic bag of shredded printer paper taped underneath. Dr. Dusen approaches SCP-6029. Finally. Let's see how you did. How? Cameras are getting smaller and smaller these days. Just keep watching. The footage shows Dr. Dusen spreading the shredded paper around SCP-6029 in the form of a thaumaturgic circle. After the circle is completed, he shuffles the flash cards before reciting what was written. A faint line of green light connects from SCP-6029 to Dr. Dusen's forehead. Dr. Dusen smiles. Finally. Thanks for getting rid of that asshole, Quake. I wish I could give you a bone right now, but there's still much work to do. Go sick him. Good boy. Dr. Dusen shuffles the flash cards again, removing a single card from the pack and recites once more. The circle glows a bright green hue before dissipating. SCP-6029 sinks into the ground and disappears. Dr. Dusen gathers a dust pan and pours the paper back into the bag. He then tapes back the bag and flash cards under the desk and resumes his work. The monitor pauses. Dr. Dusen is sweating. Now, now hear me out. I heard enough. Creating a makeshift ritual circle right under our noses was pretty clever I must admit. But writing and keeping not only the spells, but all locations of every known Gork property in your office. Now that is disappointing. Dr. Dusen remains silent. Director McInnes pulls the monitor towards himself and types. You used many spells, but only three caught my eye. The first one allows the augmentation of anomalous properties. The second allows the reading of the minds of animals and the last makes animals obey your commands with bits of spitty class thaumaturgy sprinkled in between. The latter two don't work on many anomalies but since SCP-6029 has a mind similar to an animal, you've been making it stronger each time. Your own personal attack dog. Dr. Dusen is silent, and is taking in slow deep breaths. You planned this from the start. Ever since those final preparations. I only had SCP-6029 come back to me after escaping then do some reconnaissance work. It was going to end there, but then I realized the deal we were coerced into. The danger we were in. 
then I also realized what SCP-6029 could do. That's when the plan changed. Hundreds of men torn apart without mercy. Equipment, and knowledge potentially lost forever, very important mind you. You stain our hands with blood. Do you have the faintest idea of what you have done? Do you even care? I did what was necessary. We were losing to them. If things had continued the way they had been we'd be fucked. It was a matter of stability, simple as that. It was for the greater good. Yes, your greater good. Not the world's good. Not the good of the families you've ruined. And certainly not the foundations. If it was for the greater good, you wouldn't have tried to hide it in the first place. You pulled a doctor down, only sloppier and more vicious. Dr. Dan killed innocents because of a monster that could be easily contained. The gawk was going to come after us sooner or later, they want to destroy us like the hand or the insurgency. It was a matter of survival. Why can't you see I was doing the foundation a favor? They were the enemy. No. You were upset because your pet project was taken from you. You couldn't handle it, and you decided to do the unthinkable. The Gork are not our enemies, they're our competitors. The difference is meaningful, Dusan. Because of you, the world is less safe. Anomalies that could have been easily taken down have more free reign. Everyone is more vulnerable than ever. All because of you. The Foundation hates the Gok. Not this much. We're two sides of the same coin. It's the way things are. Dusan. You have committed treason. The hell I have. You know how much potential research those bastards have destroyed that could have bettered mankind? The chair that was thrown down the wood chipper. How about the cute ship couple they ruthlessly murdered? Don't even get me started on Site 13. The people they poisoned against us. How they gloated in our faces. You're saying Burchard was innocent? Compared to you. Yes. You're making excuses at this point. All those scenarios. They were caused by different people in charge and that last one happened in a different dimension entirely. Every group has their bad apples, they're not a hive mind, Dusan. We're no exception. Bullshit. That apple tree was rotten to the core. And you have the gall to call me traitor? Fuck that. You deserved that title. They deserved everything that happened and you should be lumped with that group you piece of she. Dr. Dusan rises from his seat and quickly lunges towards Director McKinnis' desk. Several guards fire their tasers. Dr. Dusan cries out in pain as he collapses to the floor. Two guards approach, pull him up to his feet, and handcuff him. Director McKinnis calmly puts the handgun away. The O5 Council disagrees. In fact, they already voted on your fate. We'd considered giving you the Dr. Dan treatment. But, considering that this is your mess it's only fair that you'll be the one to fix it. Fix? You are going to be our very special gift basket to the Gork. We can't tell them the exact reason why of course, that would destroy any remaining bridges. Outside of Birchard and DeLong, no one in the Gork knows who you are. But they'll soon learn you're Charlie Darren, a member of the Serpent's Hand that went rogue and thought they could burn the book burners without getting scorched themselves. We'll have to fabricate some things but I imagine that won't be any trouble for us at all. No. Come on, this isn't right. This isn't justice. This. Oh fuck. No. Damn it McKinnis you know me. I knew you. Congratulations on your promotion to the War of Shame, Dusan. I hope it was worth it. All right, you can take him to transport now. No. No. Let me go. Think what you're doing here. It was for the safety for the Foundation. It had to be done. Ow. Fuck. Stop it. No. McKinnis. Please. Give me a second chance. Please. I swear to God. Please. Dr. Dusan is dragged out of Director McKinnis' office with heavy resistance. His shouting continues to be audible until the door closes. 
Director McInnes looks at the paper bag sitting on the desk and places it into the trash. Director McInnes then covers his face with his hand and shakes his head. End log. After his conviction, Dr. Dusen's memory was altered via Class F amnestics and reconditioning. Documents were also fabricated to support Dr. Dusen's involvement and include his ties with the Foundation. The Gorp praised the Foundation for their efforts and invited multiple representatives to Dr. Dusen's capital punishment. Dr. Dusen continued to proclaim his innocence and attempt to shift blame before being hanged on the 11th of October 2021. SCP-6029 was captured and all thaumaturgic influence was removed. It returned to its former size but retained all augmentations. SCP-6029 was then recontained at Site-43, and no breach in containment has been reported since. Due to the increased need for safeguards against the anomalous, the Foundation diverted a sizable amount of its resources to the GORP for the goal of building their organization back to maximum self-sufficiency. The GORP is projected to regain half of its former influence by 2025. SCP-6029 is scheduled for transfer to the newly remodeled Area 07 on 30 November 2021 on the direct order of Director McInnes gaining further praise from the Gork and opening the door to further cooperation between both parties. As the time of writing, tensions between the Foundation and the Gork are at an all-time low. Thank you for tuning in, we hope that you enjoyed this broadcast. If you did please subscribe, like and share it around. If you have any particular case files you'd like us to cover in future broadcasts leave a comment below and we'll get around to it shortly. Tune in again tomorrow for more revelations.